So hi everybody, it's it's Good Friday night. And so we're in that time in the church uh, between death and resurrection. And I hope uh, people are having a, a sacred time with that if you're a Christian. Uh, if you're not, uh, welcome to this little video too. I had a request that um, I explain something about these icons that, that I have. So I thought I'd take a little time and talk to you about the icons of Holy Week. So I will take my face out of this and grab the camera and, and show you a few icons and explain a little bit of symbolism. So first of all, icons are, you know, they're not meant to be art pieces, but objects for prayer. They really come out of the uh, Greek Orthodox tradition, Russian Orthodox tradition, and they're substantial to their liturgy and their prayer in their churches. Um, and so I don't mean to treat this like a, a museum, or, but, I, but I do value these. I love taking these into the classrooms to explain uh, to the children about icons. So let's just start, I'll show you this one. So this is Palm Sunday. You can see Jesus coming in. You see someone up there on the, in the palm tree and they're spreading the cloaks on the ground. It's, just, it's called the um, entry into Jerusalem icon. And uh, you can see on here, it's like the apostles were never that crazy about going to, into Jerusalem with Jesus. You can see he's kind of, that's Peter or whoever saying, are you sure you want to do this? I don't know if we want to go into Jerusalem. You, last time you're here, they tried to kill you. And, you know, so they're trying to talk them out of it. Here they're being welcomed by the people of Jerusalem with open arms, right? So that's Palm Sunday. It starts our Holy Week. Over here, I've highlighted this. This is, uh, you know, to our eyes, it looks like a, a, a sad icon, right? It's Jesus uh, handcuffed um, in prison, crown of thorns on his head, uh, mocked. The actual name of this in the Greek Orthodox tradition is the nymphios, or the bridegroom. And it's an interesting way of looking at Holy Week. So this is like the icon that is... Um, <clears throat> emphasized like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of Holy Week. And they see the crucifixion of Jesus as his wedding. Who is he marrying? He's marrying us. He's marrying humanity. And he's the bridegroom. And this time of trial and mockery and his passion is the wedding banquet. And his actual crucifixion are his wedding vows. So what we see as loss and suffering and death is Jesus preparing for his great wedding, his great love uh, consummated with us on the cross. Different way of looking at it, yeah? It's, it's really quite, quite beautiful. Uh, let's see, we have the mystical supper. Uh, they call it, so we might, we'd call it the last supper, typically, right? Uh, they call it the mystical supper. It's, it's, um, what it's, it's a supper on earth. What makes it mystical is it's, it's, it's connecting us because of the Eucharist with the life of heaven, the bread of life, um, God's life. When we receive the body of Christ, we're invited to share in divine life. So it's a, it's a mystical supper. Uh, just a couple things about this. So you see the 12 apostles. Um, you can, Judas always stands out in these, right? You have Christ with his halo there and his the Greek lettering above it is aon, means he who is. And uh, you can just see the different apostles. And, um, oh, that one looks a little different, right? That would be Judas reaching for the, the dish. He who dips his food into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. And what I read about this was that every other apostle has two eyes showing. But Judas just has his face in profile or one eye. And that means while the others are open to uh, God and fully open and open-hearted, uh, Judas is not, tragically. I have a couple icons of the scene in the garden. So there's Judas kissing Jesus, betrayed with a kiss. Uh, down below, you can see Peter cutting off the ear of one of the servants. Jesus was pretty upset with that. Put the sword down. If you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. Um, and I think I have a, there's a, that's just another scene from the Last Supper, the beloved disciple, trying to figure out who, who, who will betray Jesus. Um, then that night after his arrest, or right before his arrest, actually Jesus goes to pray, right? 
This is a Garden of Gethsemane scene. Sometimes in icons, it's it's uh, uh, it's like two time frames at once. So you see two images of Jesus. They're just different times. The one on the top left, he is he's praying, Lord, uh, let this cup pass from me. But if not, let me drink it. Let your will be done. And down here, he's kind of basically saying, Hey guys, I told you to stay awake with me, and you're sleeping. Uh, so you can kind of take both of those in with one image, Garden of Gethsemane. Um, so the crucifixion icon, that is uh, right here. Um, what to say about shining, it's a gold leaf. So, um, so the main characters besides Jesus, uh, Mary, you know, right there with the other women, maybe one's Mary Magdalene and you say there, well, all the others uh, dispersed. A lot of the women stayed and watched. And uh, the two men on the left, that's the beloved disciple. We heard today in that gospel story about uh, Jesus giving the beloved disciple to Mary to take care of and vice versa. And then uh, uh, that fellow right there behind, that would be the Saint centurion, the soldier. In one of the gospels, I think Mark... He says, surely this was the Son of God, even one of those who crucified Jesus, acknowledged him after the fact as the Son of God. Um, I think in Luke's Gospel, he says, surely this was an innocent man. Sorry for that reflection. Um, I learned this fall that you see how body, the body of Jesus is a little uh, serpentine. It's a little like an S. Um, they say that's to reminisce for us. There's a passage in John's Gospel um, that says, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert to heal those who had been um, poisoned by the serpent, so will the Son of Man be lifted up you know, and bring salvation to all people. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a really kind of an oblique reference to that, to that passage. And this is interesting. So on all these crucifixion icons, you'll see a skull. And so the tradition is um, that, um, you know, in Matthew's gospel, it says that when Jesus died, there was an earthquake. And that when the earthquake, it exposed the skull. And the legend is that the sons of Noah, way back, like Noah's Ark Noah, that they buried the bones of Adam under Golgotha, right under the place where Christ was crucified. And so you see, uh, it's not real apparent that blood is dripping on the skull in this, in this image here, but you see the blood from Jesus' feet, how it's dripping down. Sorry for my shadows there. Uh, and a lot of them, it's dripping down onto this skull. So Adam is the first human representing the human race, is redeemed by the blood of Christ. You know, we are redeemed by his, by his blood is the message there. So really a beautiful, a uh, uh, lot of symbolism in that crucifixion icon. Um, I, this is a handwritten one I got that I really liked. This is taking Jesus down from the cross. I um, actually got that in Jerusalem near the, uh, Calvary, the church that has Golgotha and the tomb in it. And I like just how precious this fellow down here, he's taken, I don't know which saint that would be, there's a halo there, but he's taking the, the nails from Jesus' feet and placing them carefully in that basket. Uh, the death of the Lord, precious. And you can see the skull of Adam there too with the blood of, that has dripped from Jesus' body on him. Uh, so that's where we are today in Holy Week. We have what we have to look forward to, of course, is this. It's uh, the resurrection, anastasis in, in Greek. Um, so this would be what, what some traditions would hold happen in our creed, we say that he descended into hell. So this is actually between Good Friday and uh, Easter Sunday that Jesus descends to the land of the dead. And see these doors there? Those are supposed to be doors. Doors of hell. The doors of the dead. The doors that separated those who had died from knowing eternal life. And Jesus, in his uh, death and resurrection, kicks down those doors. And some people, they see that and they go, well, that must be the devil, that fellow down there, that's all. Well, it's really a personification of death. And all those uh, silver things all around, like hinges, and that's like you just beat those 
I just imagine him doing a, just a heavy karate kick and just beating down those doors of death, so angry at death. And uh, so now death has no more power over us. He's opened the way to eternal life. Death is all uh, hogtied like that, right? So, um, and then uh, these two characters are Adam and Eve. You can see he's pulling them up by the hand. And they represent as the first human beings that represent humanity in, in all the dead. It's not just that those two are being raised, but that he raises all of it. It's really a very powerful image of of Christ uh, calling us and uh, pulling us to life. Um, the people, so they say on, on the right, are his family members who had died, members of his family tree. So we have King David, King Solomon, and John the Baptist, his cousin. And then on, on his left there, uh, in iconography, we often think of Moses as an old guy with the beard, but he's, he's the shepherd. He's the young one there is Moses. And then probably um, they said... Um, Isaiah the prophet, and often Abel, the first human being born, you know, of of Adam and Eve. So, in the the design around Jesus, you can see the rays of glory coming from him, and the the blue, it's like a Mandela, just a, a sign of his of his power. So, those are icons that talk about some of the meaning of of Holy Week. Um, if that is your creed, and we're walking this these uh, holy days together. I wish you um, the love of God on the cross, his life poured out for all of us, and the power of God in his resurrection for you.